Fresh apple cranberry compote. Fresh amber apple. Fresh apple berry compote. Hey guys, I got some cranberries left over in the fridge from the holidays. I've also got a ton of apples. I thought I would show you how to do a quick and dirty compote today. It's a way to use up old fruit, taste delicious, make your own jam. Uh, a heck of a lot less sugar and more deliciousness. Get some more vitamins and fruits in your diet. Check this out. Just going to use up some apples and cranberries and make some good. What you are seeing here, a lovely display of apples. Um, I found apples on sale uh, a couple weeks ago at Costco, and these have been the display item in my living room, and now it is time to use them up. So I have a bunch of apples here, and I also have, believe it or not, some cranberries left in my fridge from the holidays. They're still perfectly fresh, and they're fine. So what I thought I would do today is use up all these apples and make a compote. A compote is just basically a stewed fruit. So um, I'm also going to do something else. I'm going to do a weight of these before and after peeling and coring, just because I'm curious how much we have left. We'll go from there. So let's get to peeling and coring. If you guys ever want to know what it is to have before and after, we have a scale here. We're going to turn it on with the bowl, which is called the tear weight, which means it's going to zero out the weight of this. And I'm going to do it in grams. And then we're going to put all the apples in here. We have five, six, seven, five grams. So five kilos, almost six kilos. And then we're gonna find out what we got afterwards. All right, I'm gonna do one apple, to show you how this goes. And then through the magic of TV, wah, you're gonna see how to, this will be done. So I like to go around the top of the apple, take off this ring of peel and the bottom. And then, with your speed peeler, you just go from the top to the bottom very easily. I'm going slow, so you can see this. Just peels it off in an arc. Can you guys see that? Very easy. Okay, the apple is peeled. Put this in our compost bucket. Then I like to take the apple and just cut it in half and in quarters. And then with a paring knife, just take out the small bits. Try to preserve as much of the apple as possible. Just take out the hard parts and there you go. Now, I'm not gonna worry about acidulated water because this is going to be cooked in a little bit and it's going to turn brown anyway, so who cares? All right, you guys, we're over here at the stove and we've got all of our apples. And don't worry, I'm going to give you some measurements at the end of this to tell you what our yield was from our peel versus our core. Um, needless to say, we've got a lot of apples in here. And as you can see, they started to turn brown. To this, I'm going to add two cups of just plain water just to get this started cooking. And then we're going to add our cranberries on top. That's uh, a lot of stuff going in here, but don't worry, it's going to totally cook down. I estimate that this is going to be half of the volume you see here. This is a, this is a big pot. This is probably a two gallon pot. So I'm going to crank on the heat and we're going to let this cook for a couple hours and we'll be back. Cranking on the heat. All right, flame on and lid on. All right, so it's only been a couple minutes, but I thought you'd like to hear the sound of the boiling. I love it. Okay, guys, this has been cooking for about an hour on low, so I'm gonna attempt to give it a little stir. Oh, you can see already, it's very soft at the bottom. That's what we want. It's stirring easily. I'm just pushing it down. You can see the apples are cooking down nicely. That's what we want. Just giving it a good stir here. Look how much reduction there is already. It's gone down about four or five inches in the pan. And just gonna stir this up to get the raw stuff to the bottom. Okay, gonna let it keep cooking.
It's been cooking for about another 45 minutes here and now I'm going to add in a quarter pound of butter which is one stick. Um, we have about a gallon and a half of fruit here. So a quarter pound of butter is not very much. It seems like what the heck but remember you're gonna be eating this like jam just like two tablespoons at a time. You're not eating you know the whole pot at the same time. Also I'm gonna add two cups of just plain white sugar. You can put brown sugar if you want based on the volume. And then I'm just going to stir this up. Now our compote is almost done here. It's only been about an hour and a half, but we don't want to cook it too much because if you can see, it's still got chunks of fruit. And what we're waiting for basically is the cranberries to cook. Some of them are still a little bit rough. Um, and then you can also see that there's a quite a bit of juice forming. Can you guys see that there? Um, so I'm going to leave the lid off now. So I want the fruit to be in pieces. I don't want it to be raw, but I also don't want to make sauce. The butter also will melt through and you won't even know that it's here. It's not going to be like, oh, there's butter. Like, oh, there's butter right there. It's not going to be buttery. It's just going to have a, a deliciousness to it. So just trust me, you'll like it. About a half an hour longer just to let all this soak in. I'm probably going to put a couple pinches of salt just to give it some highlights to the flavor. And then it'll be ready for putting in jars or however you do it. And we'll go from there. All right, you guys. We've done it. We have reached the end of our cooking process and our compote. And now I feel like I'm giving my, my best secrets away. So here's secret number one, and that is to put a tiny bit of salt in. Put about a teaspoon of salt for this whole thing. And the other secret is I'm going to put about a teaspoon of vanilla. You'll never know it's there. But somehow, you'll have this flavor of, mmm, darn, that's good. So I'm going to stir that up one last time. You can see we've still got nice chunks of apple, some nice chunks, some nice sauce, and some cranberries. And then what I do, while it's still hot, I put mine in jars. Um, I've got all different shapes, shapes and sizes. I've got uh, some, some just mason jars here. And... The wide mouth helps because this stuff is hot. Now, I don't go through the entire canning process of sealing these and boiling them and everything else, but I do fill them and I put them in the fridge and I put them way in the back and they'll keep for months and months. Um, so don't worry about that too much. Seal it up here pretty good like that. Then I'll put a lid on it. And this is what it looks like when it's done. You can see apples and cranberries and all that kind of stuff. Um, Labels help because sometimes this stuff gets, especially when you make this much. Um, let's, let's give it a taste. Oh, and I also turn my jars upside down so that the hot liquid kind of seals it. All right, you guys are gonna notice that for my little taster here, I'm in a different shirt. It's the second day because I was really tired when I started this video, but I wanted to finish it for you. So you guys can see Appleberry compote, and it's in a cold bowl so it can cool off so I can give it a taste. All right, I'm going to try eating a little bit of the sauce part first with a little bit of berry. It's very hot. Oh, man. That's good. If you haven't tried this, try this. Get out some yogurt. Get some Greek yogurt. I know it's all the rage right now with your probiotics. Put a couple scoops of this over it after it's cooled and been in the fridge, and you're gonna love it. Oh, you can put it on waffles, you can put it on pancakes, you can eat it by yourself for a late night snack. Try it on ice cream, all the good stuff. Mmm. I'll tell you what, a little tiny bit of butter in there and a little bit of vanilla and salt go a long way to just make the apples really pop out and you get a nice zing from the cranberries. Give it a try, you guys. Enjoy. Hope you guys enjoyed this. Some apples and cranberries, not too hard to make. A good way to use up fruit and have something delicious as a side. Put it on your toast, throw it on your oatmeal. Hope you guys enjoyed. Uh, find me on Facebook. You know this. E-U-D-A-E-M-O-N-I-U-S. Mark 2. Eudemonius Mark 2. I'm also on the email or on the merch. Check out the Etsy. Or whatever else you like. Um, what else to tell you guys? Hope you guys have a good one. Talk to you later. Bye. And just thought you guys might like to see a final thing, how much it totally made. So we got two big jars, a medium jar, some little jars, some things for the fridge, and a bowl.